greetings on this fourth Sunday of Lent. It is great to have you with us. I'm Mert Shane, pastor here at Kiyoki Chapel. Uh, and today is also United Methodist Commission on Relief Sunday. That is, uh, special offerings are given for our, what we refer to as encore. Those are the individuals that uh, are responsible for helping us in times of distress. And so each time that you hear of a major storm or a situation where uh, people are in distress, know that United Methodist Commission on Relief will be there. They are usually the first to arrive and the last to leave. And so we pay tribute to them today and give a special offering for that ministry. And so let us begin our worship together. Come, all who are weary and heavy laden, for God promises the gift of rest and renewal. Come, all who are weighed down by sin and regrets and fears, for God promises the gift of hope and new possibilities. Let us worship God in this hour, that we may follow Christ in all our hours. Let us pray. Loving God, rich in mercy, your grace extends to the far reaches of your creation. Your love beckons to us from great distances. As we gather in your name, give us courage to share our stories, and give witness to your work in our lives. Help us to hear your voice through one another and respond to your invitation to trust in you. Amen. Our children's sermon today is looking at the term grace. So, I know that you've heard that term on many occasions in numerous different fashions. And so maybe you know somebody by the name of Grace, and we have a, a person in our congregation by the name of Grace. Um, maybe you're familiar with the term that uh, at mealtime, uh, people talk about, let's give, uh, who's going to give Grace? Or maybe you have heard it that uh, in the benediction of the close of worship, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, or a phrase similar to that. So many times you've heard that term used. You've also heard terms like gracious and gracious and grateful. They're all about grace. And so, grace is a gift, something that we want to give thanks for. You see, grace is a great gift, something that we don't earn. God loves us, and so God gives us His grace. And so, it's a gift, free for everyone. And so, we want to always give thanks and praise to God for that gift of God's love. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for always being here for us. Thank you for giving us your grace. Amen. As we come together in our time of prayer, um, as you have special needs and concerns, please uh, Shot them down, send them to me by text or email, or give me a call. Um, one that I heard from was a um, granddaughter of one of our parishioners, and she was concerned about the uh, her significant other and the loss of his grandmother. And so we lift that up in prayer today. We give thanks 
also for all those folks that are receiving vaccines. And if you have been uh, inoculated, if you've received a vaccine, uh, please let me know so that we have more information relative to our reopening. So let us pray.
and the glory forever. As we continue to give God thanks for all the many blessings we receive, we thank you for supporting our uh, ministry, uh, for its missions, and so we take this time to give God thanks and also to bless the offering of to United Methodist uh, Commission on Relief. Let us pray. God, you are the giver of all good gifts. Open our hearts to respond to your grace with generosity and graciousness ourselves. Bless these gifts and send them into the world as embodiments of your love and grace brought to all in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is from John 3. Uh, verses 14 through 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the man of, son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gloria. <coughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your holy scriptures whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with a ready willingness to hear its truths, heed its calling, and enact its lessons. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our text today is taken from Psalm chapter 107. I'll read verses 1 through 3, and then verses 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those who redeemed from the hand of the foe, those who gathered from the lands, from east and west, 
from north and south. Verse 17, some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their inequities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for me. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. Did you ever watch children play hide-and-seek? Oh, they play hide-and-seek in numerous different fashions, in numerous different places, just about anywhere they go. They can play hide-and-seek from the youngest to the oldest. I've seen it played in, right in front of my eyes. Everybody was in the room together and they still were able to play hide and seek. And it's always interesting how they play and what kind of rules they come up with and what kind of excuses they make in relationship to being caught or the great places that they hide or what they use in their hiding efforts. And What's the most obvious time to play hide and seek? Oh, especially when it's dark. So that there's very little light, so that they can get away with whatever they possibly can. So that others can't see them. Keep that thought in mind. As we review the scriptures today and we look at Psalm, it's broken out into three actual pieces here for us to recognize. First of all, there's a presentation of groups that are troubled. People that have been in distress, they, those in particular that have been in exile. We know that they have had troubled times and had gone through a great deal of distress in the process of trying to stay alive. And so, the second point is the description of their cries to the Lord and God's salvation for them. We recognize the psychological misery that they have undertaken. You could probably relate to that right now in that many of you have been confined and dealing with this quarantine as we confront this virus. And so many of us have dealt with psychological misery of not being with friends and family. And so we talk to others about our troubles and what we have endured in our stressful times. But the key, most important part of the psalm is a call to give thanks. That even though we've had difficult times, it's important to give God thanks and recognize all that we truly have in relationship to our survival. Many times we don't take the time, we just grumble and we want others to feel our grumbling pain instead of recognizing how good God has been to us. Some of you have already received uh, the vaccine and some of you have it coming up and others that have not had appointments yet. 
And so we have a variety of feelings and thoughts relative to what it is that we're actually enduring on a daily basis. But recognize the scripture from John. Oh yeah, we focus on for God so loved the world. But let's look at the other components of that scripture. God's purpose is to save. To help each and every one of us to grow and to be closer to God. And just as the Son of Man is lifted up, we too will be lifted up if we believe. And so I thought about that phrase and started to look at what's it like to be lifted up? Well, lately I've been watching television shows and sometimes they show me photos and pictures from a higher vantage point. Or they talk about living in places where they have a balcony or numerous floors so that they can look out and see the beauty of nature. And so to be lifted up, how you can see from a different vantage point and recognize the wonders that God has created. And so with that thought in mind of what has God done, what has God created, we start to recognize God's purpose in saving us. And so individuals in this scripture judge themselves by hiding their evil deeds from the light of Christ's holiness. Again, getting back to that light and dark, how we hide things in the dark. Oh yeah, our children have hidden things in numerous different places. And especially in dark places that they think we'll never find it. And so just like in hide and seek, we do the same things in our lives. When do we see most crimes occur? They occur most commonly at night, in the darkness, where people think they're going to get away with it. Our goal is to be honest with ourselves, to look at what God has done for us and to recognize what it is that we need to do to grow and prosper. The gifts that we have received, that grace that's above all other gifts. God's love. And so we shouldn't be prowling around at night trying to get away with things, but bringing our attention, bringing our focus to the love of God, what God has done for us. And to be filled with the light, to be filled with love, so that people can see that love in all that we do and everything that we say. Is that happening for you? Are you talking about how God's love has impacted you? Are you grown up? One of the texts that I read talked about, well, this scripture answers the question of why do people go to hell? Simply put, they don't believe in Jesus. Enough said. And so we have to continuously answer, what are we hiding from? Are we hiding from the fact that we love Jesus, that God has been so good to us? Are we hiding our love under a bushel that our light isn't shining as we go through our lives? Are you hiding from God? God gives us the victory of salvation as a gift. It's not a matter of playing hide and seek. 
It's a matter of being open and willing to accept God's love. What are you going to do today to show God's love? Are you going to show some act of kindness? Are you going to share your love with others? Are you going to stop and take the time to say thank you, God? for all the many blessings that I have received. What are you going to do? The ball is in your court. Are you going to play hide and seek? Or are you going to show yourself the real you, the child that's loved by God? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for each and every day for the opportunity to live in what we think of sometimes as a world of trouble. But, O oh God, we know that you have blessed us, you have blessed this world and all that is by it. And so we ask that you help us to show your love, not to play hide and seek, but to be visible to show our light shining forth, to show the light of Christ in our lives, so that we too can show the victory of salvation as a gift from you in your love, and to always give you the thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now go forth. Go forth and show the love of God in this world to, so that to those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. Love of God and Holy Spirit be with you now and always in all that you do and everywhere you go. Go forth in peace. Stay safe. Love yourself and love your neighbor. And show God's love wherever you go. Both now and always.